Income tax 2023-2024. Business expenses, insurance, and payroll expense tax software example. Get ready and some coffee so we can recognize the quacks when doing income tax preparation 2023-2024. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our crunching numbers is my cardio product line. Now, I'm not saying that subscribing to this channel, crunching numbers with us, will make you thin, fit, and healthy or anything. However, it does seem like it worked for her. Just saying. So, you know, subscribe, hit the bell thing, and buy some merchandise. So you can make the world a better place by sharing your accounting instruction exercise routine. If you would like a commercial-free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. Here we are in our form 1040 example problems using Lacert tax software. You don't need tax software to follow along, but if you have access to software, it's a great tool to run scenarios with. You can also get access to forms, schedules, instructions at the IRS website, irs.gov, irs.gov. Standard starting point. We've got Adam Taxman. Just trying to avoid a dang tax, man. Living in Beverly Hills, 90210. We're going to say no dependents, single filer, got Schedule C income. Let's go over to that Schedule C to follow that through. Here is the Schedule C, profit or loss from business, having an income statement format, income minus expenses. In essence, the net income is what's going to roll to the Schedule 1. Additional income and adjustments to income line number 3, business income. Income, there's the 100,000, which will roll into the form 1040. Line number eight, additional income from Schedule 1, the 100,000. Also, if we go back to the Schedule C, we see the bottom line, in essence, the net income rolling into the Schedule SE, self-employment tax, where we calculate Social Security and Medicare coming out to 14129 in this example, which rolls into Schedule 2, additional taxes, other taxes, line 4, there's the 14129 self-employment tax, which rolls into the Form 1040, page number 2, line 23 for the other taxes. And if we go back to that self-employment uh, tax, we get half of that tax which rolls into the Schedule 1, additional income and adjustments to income, page number 2, adjustments to income, line 15, deductible part of self-employment, there's the 7065 which rolls into the Form 1040, where we now see that we have the 100000 minus the 7065 adjusted gross income, 92935 We've got the standard deduction, 13850 We've got the qualified business income deduction, form 8995. Here's our worksheet for it, 15817. Subtotal, getting us finally down to the total tax or taxable income, 63268 And page number two, Calculating the tax, federal income tax, 9228 and the other taxes, self-employment, 14129 to get us to the 23357 Okay, that's the starting point. Let's go back to page number one. We're focusing, of course, on the Schedule C. Let's go to the Schedule C, profit or loss from business. The two things we want to take a look at is the employee expenses as well as the insurance. So let's do a quick look on the employee expenses. We touched on these when we're thinking about the differences between employee expenses and the self-employment tax. So I won't go into it in as much detail here, but the general idea would be that payroll is going to be uh, something that has its own, it's, it's complicated in and of itself from a bookkeeping standpoint and has some specialization just within the payroll. So when we're thinking about our tax preparation, I would want to think about how we're going to be dealing with the bookkeeping side of things and with payroll if there is payroll. 
Remember that if we're talking about small businesses, possibly they have W-2 income and then they have like gig work on the side. It's likely they don't have any wages because it's just it's just side work and they're not going to be hiring any employees in that case, most likely. And remember that with a Schedule C, the owner is not uh, going to be issuing themselves a W-2 and therefore will not have to be dealing with payroll. So there's pros and cons of that. But the positive of that, of course, is we don't have to issue ourselves payroll typically. However, we still have to deal with the equivalent of payroll taxes, Social Security and Medicare. So how do we do that? Well, the government basically says the net income is in essence subject to self-employment tax. And instead of processing that through payroll, we have to process it through the schedule uh, SE, the self-employment tax. And that's where you get this calculation down here of the 14,129. And you'll recall that half of that is deductible when we talked in a prior presentation about the uh, self-employment tax. Remember that this is higher than if you were a W-2 employee, because as a W-2 employee, if you made the same income, then you would only be subject to the employee part of self-employment tax. And here we're basically almost doubling that. It's a little bit more complex than that. So that's one thing that you got to kind of consider when you're thinking of going from a W-2 position to like self-employed. The payroll taxes are going to be uh, significant. On the plus side, of course, you can deduct things and you might actually even end up with a loss given the, the number of deductions and so on and so forth. Now, that's a little bit different than if we were to have, say, a corporation. If this was a corporation, then the corporation is owned by the shareholders and all of the management of the corporation, including top management like the CEO, for example, would still be employees issued a W-2. So, so even the people basically running the company from a management standpoint are basically being paid in a W-2 format in a corporation and the tax would not be done on the, on the Form 1040 or the Schedule C, but on a separate tax return. How does the money get to the owners, the shareholders? It's gonna go through dividends, which could result in double taxation. And so then you have other entities that come up, such as an S corporation, which again has another tax return calculating. Um, but then there's a flow through component to like an S corporation. So then the question is, well, do you wait till the stuff flows through to, to our tax return here on the form 1040 and then calculate the self-employment tax or do we pay ourselves wages? And for an S corporation, you typically have to pay yourself wages and that will be make you as the owner subject to self-employment tax. For a partnership, then it might flow through and then again, you calculate the self-employment tax on our end. So that self-employment tax is part of the issue that comes in and one of the distinguishing factors on payroll if we're talking about a sole proprietorship versus an S corporation, LLC, or like a C corporation, what is the manager or what are the owners uh, going to be subject to? Do they get issue themselves a W-2 or not with a sole proprietorship? No. So if we're doing taxes for an individual that has like W-2 income and they have a side job, a side hustle like gig work that we have to process a Schedule C for, it's likely that we don't have to deal with wages or payroll situations because they don't have any employees. They still have to deal with the self-employment tax, but not through payroll, not through issuing themselves a W-2, but rather through basically taking the net income, pulling it over to the schedule SE, the self-employment tax and calculating it that way. Now note that it is possible, of course, for a schedule C to have employees. Sometimes people think that because it's called a sole proprietorship type of, of business, for the Schedule C, it means that there are no employees. And that's not generally the case. The reason we call it a sole proprietor is because it has one owner as opposed to two or more owners, in which case the default entity would be a partnership. And because of the allocation of the income in a partnership, you would typically need a separate uh, return uh, for that. And it's also different from a corporation, which is the, the separate legal entity. And then you have the hybrids of those, like an S corporation 
and an LLC, for example. But we could be a sole proprietorship and then hire employees. When we hire employees, the payroll is going to be a bookkeeping side of the situation and can be quite complex, a specialty in and of itself, even if we have limited employees. So again, we want to think about how much bookkeeping work do we want to help a client out with if we're doing tax preparation and how, what kind of systems can we set up to help with the bookkeeping? What bookkeepers do we want to work with? And possibly, even if we have bookkeepers, how do we want to deal with payroll if there's going to be payroll involved? Do we want to use like, like the software, QuickBooks having, for example, a payroll component that you have to pay more for? Or possibly we can use and get the help of third-party payroll providers. So the network that you put together could be really help you out in in putting together your business like if you're the tax preparer you might still be able to negotiate and kind of put together a system that works with a with a group of people you might also have bookkeepers that you work with they might be really good working on a cash based system using bank feeds and then you also might work with an adp or a paychecks or some kind of payroll provider that can do the payroll component of it and then just piece it all together when you do uh, the tax preparation. But the bottom line on the payroll is that you're, they're going to have to issue the W-2s somehow. And they're going to have to issue the 941s, which are the quarterly payroll typically. And then you've got the 940 form that are going to have to be issued. That's all on the bookkeeping side. That's not really part of our of our side of things right here for income tax preparation. But on our side, we might want to at least take a look at these forms and, and try to say, okay, uh, is the total on the W-2s or the W-3 tying out to the payroll that we are reporting on line 26? If it doesn't, if it's not even close, then you would think that could be a potential red flag to the government because we've issued them W-2 forms. And remember the idea of how taxes work. When we have employees, the, the IRS is saying, do you want this deduction right here? We're going to say, yes, we do. It's a huge deduction for us. And they're going to say, well, that's great. You have to rat out who you gave the money to so we can go after them and get our income, our taxes from them. Not only that, but if they're employees, you have to rat them out with the W-2 and W-3 forms that you're sending to us. And you have to take the money out of their paycheck before you give it to them and give it to us on their behalf. That means that we've already given them the forms, right? So if our number here doesn't tie out to the total on the 941s and the W-2s and the W-3, you could think that they could match that out and say, hey, something's out of whack, which you would think could trigger an audit. Also remember that the wages here, you could also have the taxes uh, up top, which are gonna be payroll taxes. Now, norm people get confused on the taxes as well when they try to kind of tie this stuff out. If you look at the W-3 is the sum of all the W-2s, the taxes on here are only gonna be half the taxes for Social Security and Medicare because it's only the employee portion. You need the employee and employer portion, which you might more likely find on the 941s, which could help you, but, that's, but those are broken out on a quarter by quarter basis. And then the FUTA tax is an employer only tax. And then you also could have taxes on the state side of things. But the reason people get confused on the taxes is they, they try to add up all the taxes on both the employee and employer parts. And, and then they, they feel like the taxes are way out of whack. But, but the, the problem is that half of the taxes that we're paying for social security and Medicare, even though we wrote the check to the government, they forced us to withhold it, take it from the employees. So we're basically paying it to the government on their behalf. That part of the taxes are included in wages. So, so gross wages should be in here, including the taxes that we took from them and paid on their behalf. The amount that's in taxes, payroll taxes, just includes our portion, our portion of Social Security, Medicare, and the FUTA, and then if there's state tax obligations as well. So bottom line, if everything was done properly on the bookkeeping side, the data input for the tax side should be really easy 
because the wages will tie out and we, we just do the data input no problem but we might want to as a double check double check our wage calculations to the 941s and the 940s as a double check and when we're picking up new clients we might want to think about do you have wages and whatnot and are you dealing with that well and think about what kind of structure we can put in place to have a network to kind of deal with with those issues okay the other one that we were thinking about is insurance so with insurance uh we have insurance over here notice it says insurance other than health insurance so we have that to deal with and we also have insurance with the car insurance which can cause us some kinds of problems now most insurance is pretty straightforward meaning liability insurance you would think is going to be a business expense and be deductible for example uh and so and that's going to be the some of the most common types of insurance it gets a little bit kind of confusing when when insurance comes into like if there was like a life insurance or something like that but usually the insurance you're dealing with is like a liability insurance for example which would be fairly clearly uh, a deductible item however you you also have car insurance now car insurance from a bookkeeping standpoint is something that you might want to again work with their bookkeepers and think about what's the base categorization of insurance because because they might put it under here under insurance or they might put it under auto expenses as a component of auto expenses it might more properly be up here in the component of auto expenses because as we talked about in a prior course or section with the car when we think about deducting the possibility of deducting the car then we have to think if we're going to use the mileage method or the the actual write-off method and if we if we used the actual write-off method we might be able to deduct the insurance but if we use the mileage method then the mileage method isn't going to include costs in theory including insurance so if for example we use the mileage method to calculate the car insurance and then we also took the insurance down here uh, as insurance twice that would cause us a problem right we would be double dipping in that case so whenever we think about the insurance line item on the bookkeeping side of things we want to think about what is in there is car insurance in there if it is we might have to break it out and put it up in the car section in some way shape or form the other thing to note with insurance is that it's a classic prepaid kind of thing and the t the tax code is going to be skeptical of prepayments so notice that the schedule c we could be on a cash based system or an accrual based system but no matter which system that we are using the tax code will sometimes force us to deviate from it so for example even if we were on uh, a cash based system then if we were trying to manipulate our taxes let's say we wanted to make net income lower this year because we have a higher we have more income this year and we're going to be in a higher tax bracket so we want to have a lower income how could we do that well we could try to right before the year ends pay a lot of stuff up front prepay things like insurance but also you could think about doing it for rent or any any vendor that anything that you owe the telephone bill you could say I'm just going to pay five years worth of telephone expenses today and because I paid the cash today then I'm going to get the expense today lowering my income now the IRS is going to say well no we're not going to let you we don't want you to do that so they're going to be suspicious of prepayments and not allow you to basically take a prepayment if it's significant now with insurance that's the classic example of something that you almost always prepay because the nature of insurance means that you pay for it before you get the coverage so and oftentimes it's cheaper to pay for like a year's worth of insurance versus month by month so then the question is do you have to do an accrual thing with insurance because it's significant and there was a prepayment component to it now the classic way to deal with that is usually from a bookkeeping standpoint have the bookkeeper record all of the insurance to a asset account called prepaid expenses and then do an adjusting entry at the end of the year to record the amount of the insurance that had actually been consumed during the year so again if you want to do adjusting entries that might that that could be a a, a, a nice system to use 
Otherwise, they might just record all ex insurance expenses to insurance expense, and you might have to do the reverse of that. You might have to say, is there an expense in here that's too much that I have to pull out because of this pre because there was a prepayment that I would then get in the following year when they consumed it. So that's another thing just to keep in mind with uh, insurance. The other thing with insurance is that we have health insurance, right? So health insurance is health insurance has gotten tied to our work be, in part because in the past, the health insurance uh, was often cheaper if you got it through work in part because you might be able to get part of a group health insurance plan. And because the insurance companies are getting multiple people to sign up for the health insurance plan, they, they sometimes could have offered cheaper rates and so on. Now, of course, they've also included tax benefits uh, with them as well. And so, so when you think about health insurance, you probably would be thinking, hey, wait a second, that's not a normal kind of expense because we didn't need to consume health insurance in order to generate revenue. It's a personal thing. But again, because it's been tied to an employee-employer relationships on a corporation side of things, we should mirror that on the, C, on the Schedule C. That's kind of like the thinking of it because, because that's the fair thing to do. So, so, so now we have over here the deductibility of health insurance. But notice the insurance line here says other than health insurance. So when we think about the health insurance, we have to think, do we qualify for the health insurance? In other words, uh, if, if you're talking about someone that, that is a W-2 employee and they already have access to health insurance, then you would think they would go through health insurance through their employer. So whenever you're dealing with a Schedule C type of client, the question is, do they have access to health insurance outside of their Schedule C? And if they, if they don't, then how are they paying for health insurance? And if, if they have a Schedule C business and they're paying for their own health insurance, then possibly you have the deductibility of health insurance, but not generally on line 15 of the Schedule C, but rather we have to go to the Schedule 1, uh, page 2. And we, we talked about this in more detail when we looked at a prior course or section on the adjustments to income. So you can go to there for more detail, but it goes into the... Uh, self-employed health insurance deduction. Now notice the differences here. Why would that be, you might ask. Uh, notice that that health insurance, if it was on a W-2 like this, then the question is, if I got health insurance through my, my, my business, through my employer, then if they deducted it from line one, then it would be reducing my, my my income taxes for the federal income taxes, but maybe I'm still subject to it for social security and Medicare, meaning I'm still paying social security and Medicare on it. So, and that's the idea here, right? So if they put it over here, instead of on the schedule C, I'm getting a benefit for the federal income taxes, but I'm still not getting the benefit for social security and Medicare. So that's why you have this kind of interplay where they have to basically put it over here, right? So we have to say, so in other words, let's just take a look at the difference. Let's imagine that we put, we put it here in insurance. And so we're gonna say it was 10,000 in insurance. And so now we have the, the 10,000. So that goes down to 90,000. And if I look at my tax calculation, Let's just write down the total tax calculation so we can see it here. I'm going to my, to do, and I'll make this format the cells. I'm going to say currency, do, 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 and then, oh, okay, Paso. All right, so then we're going to say 20,305. So 20,305, boom. Okay, so then, then let's say I'm, I'm going to go back on over. Let's remove it from there. And instead, I'm going to put it on uh, d -d 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 the Schedule 1, uh, Self-Employed Health Insurance. D -d 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 and let's put it here, 10,000. Boom. And so now if I go back to the 1040 and page 2, so now we're at the tax of 21,597, 21,597. 21, 
so I didn't get as much of a benefit on that second one, right? Because and the and the reason is because if it was on the schedule C, then it would be reducing my net income, which would also be reducing the net income over here when my, when I go to the schedule S E calculating the the social security and medicare with on the other hand when they have to put it over here then then now i'm getting a benefit just for the federal income taxes but it's not reducing the taxes for the social security and medicare so that's the general idea so the recap with with the wages you want to think about do you want to take on clients with wages if you do take on clients with wages you can double check the number that was put on the tax return and then think about your network, your bookkeeping network, your payroll network and how everything's going to connect together. With insurance, you have to think about do they qualify if they have a schedule C, how are they paying for their insurance? It's is it through another through their W2 work or are the only way they have access to insurance is to pay for it themselves and then thinking okay, now I I might be able to deduct insurance so how am I going to, where can I write that off? Possibly not on, again, the Schedule C, but somewhere else. And noting that the employee on the bookkeeping side might not have included insurance because you wouldn't think insurance is a business expense. It's one of those things that's kind of weird. So you might have their business books and then you'd also have to say, okay, give me how much you spent on insurance. One other thing with insurance, by the way, the health insurance, if they, if they paid in, to the, the marketplace and they're subject to uh, an, an insurance, a credit related to insurance because of the health insurance marketplace, then you would that could complicate the deductibility of the insurance as well because the credit's gonna lower the amount that you paid into the premiums because part of it's gonna be paid by the government in essence. And you would think in that case then that you would only get a deduction for the amount that you actually paid for insurance after the credit so that's another, another kind of wrinkle in the system that you got to make you got to keep in mind if you're dealing with that health insurance marketplace situation which is usually there for more lower income individuals that are doing the health insurance marketplace although many people might have that anyway that that plan but they'll only be subject to the credit for lower income individuals but in any case that's the general idea